Thanks, Angelica. Now, we are a nation of dog lovers, but a new study out this week has led some vets to urge people to stop buying certain dogs until breeding issues are addressed. They say that the flat faces bred into some breeds for cosmetic reasons can cause a lifetime of suffering. With us in the studio to discuss this and look at ways forward are Dr Dan O'Neill, mm. uh, one of the authors of a new study, uh, Anna Ewers clark a vet with the animal charity Blue Cross, and Sonia Sachs from the Bulldog Council Breed Club and her dog, Martha. Uh, good to see you all. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, Dan, your research is leading the way worldwide. Uh, why is it so important? Thanks, Sean. This is a wonderful opportunity to chat about this. Dog breeds were invented 150 years ago. They've always changed, but we're now at a pivotal mo moment when we have evidence that can help us direct the future change. Breeds such as Bulldogs have become hugely popular. They are lovely dogs from a personality point of view, but unfortunately the evidence says now we have severe health issues with the breed. So we are now trying to help reshape the breed for the future so this breed can be healthy and happy and bring joy to the lives of their owners. And, and what's wrong with the, the current way the breeding is? Well, the evidence, that, the evidence from the Vet Compass study at the Royal Veterinary College shows that there are some key health issues associated with their body shape. So they have a lot of skin folds, especially around their face, but also around their tail base, and those are leading to skin infections. The very short jaw is leading to breathing problems, so these dogs struggle with the heat, often struggle to breathe even at rest, um, and the lack of a tail is associated with issues as well. Um, also, they're very prone to obesity, they're very prone to skin problems. The study related to the wider population of pet dogs in the UK, so it, it just means we have an issue that we have to deal with and help owners to pick better dogs in the future. And, and this all sounds awful. Uh, why has it happened? It, can we blame the breeders? Well, I, I don't think it's so much an issue of blame. There's the issues about uh, bulldogs have been known for over a century, and I think every little decision we make is another grain of sand that's all adding up to this huge huge rock of welfare issues that's pressing on the breed. Um, but with good thinking and good planning now and the work from the, the British Bulldog Breed Council, we can find a good route forward for this breed to protect the breed. Well, let's hope so. Uh, Anna, you're a vet with the animal charity Blue Cross. Uh, you've seen pugs and bulldogs come into the Blue Cross hospitals and even to the rehoming system. Why is that? Well, I think, unfortunately, um, people do get drawn in by these lovely dogs. They have fantastic sort of personalities. Um, they have these really cute little baby faces. Um, but if you see one of these guys on, a, on an advert or on social media, and um, perhaps if you don't do the research into some of the consequences of the more extreme examples of the breed, um, you can be left with a number of health problems, as, as Dan's just said. So for us at Blue Cross, um, we do unfortunately see a lot of these dogs coming into our, our hospitals with health problems skin problems, um, sort of breathing problems, um, stomach problems as well. And people don't always have the, the financial means to help them or the ability to, to provide them with the special care that they need. So we're there to support them as vets with the treatment, um, but also in those sad cases where they do need us to find them perhaps a, a new home. Um, so we're providing that support for these kinds of breeds because people aren't prepared and aren't aware of the issues we've just discussed. Yeah, and we're not uh, blaming the, the owners, uh, of course, course. Uh, I mean, the obvious thing I'm thinking is, well, let's just ban the breed. But that, it's not that straightforward, is it? Absolutely. It, it's really not that simple. And I think we need to get away from this kind of labelling of, of a, a breed or a dog as, as kind of good or bad. Um, I think what we need to look at is, is health and welfare and how can we help these dogs be healthier and happier? Because as owners, we all love our pets. <coughs> we want them to have those happy, healthy lives. So looking at how we can help them to be as, as happy and have that really positive welfare, improving the breeds to get that positive progress is really important. Yeah, healthier dogs. That's where we bring in the healthy dogs. So we've got Martha here, <laughs> and Sonia as well. Uh, Sonia, tell us about Martha. She's a, so an English bulldog and she's, she's bred in the right way, is that? Yeah, she's a bulldog. So she's a bulldog and she's bred to the breed standard. Um, and the breed standard for the bulldog doesn't call for any exaggerations or unsoundness. Um, but what we find is that we now, the bulldog comes under an umbrella of bulldog types that are of different um, uh, colours, coats, um, we have toad bulldogs, uh, micro bulldogs, fluffy bulldogs, hairless bulldogs, and they're all 
these people are breeding away from the breed standard. So they're reintroducing the exaggerations that we as a breed are really trying to get away from. Yeah, I know Martha's been a little bit shy with me. She, she's had a little sniff of my hand, yeah. but at the moment mm. we're just building our relationship, yeah. aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, how does she look different? Oh, here we are. I might even get a sniff. How does she yeah. look different to the dogs she that don't She is the um, from Gold Health Tested Parents. So the Breed Council have a health scheme that we've been working on since 2006. It started. Um, but um, in the last 11 years, we've introduced a, a health scheme. So um, to become a gold, they have to have um, eyes, an eye test, the breathing test, which is the BOAS, which we've been um, involved with um, for six years. Mm. Um, but how does she test. look different to... She looks different because she's not exaggerated. She doesn't have the huge amount of wrinkle on her head. Mm. She doesn't. She has really good wide open nostrils, clear eyes. The wrinkle doesn't interfere with her eyes. Mm. She's got a good length of neck, big ribs, and she has a tail. The breed standard says we should have all these things. Mm. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Uh, Dan, um, what advice would you give to someone who, you know, desperately wants a dog that's got the big eyes and has got those features? What, what would you say? Well, the, the, in, in the UK, there's a group called the Brachycephalic Working Group, an expert group that's working to protect the breed. And there's three messages we're trying to give. Number one, stop and think before buying a flat-faced dog. So if you're thinking of buying one, do your research and think whether you actually want a, a flat-faced dog. Number two, if you already own one, be aware of the key health issues. The Vet Compass study shows that, the skin problems, um, the eye problems, the breathing problems. And number three, if you're still committed to getting one of these dogs, make sure you get one from a very good breeder that is breeding for moderate confirmation. So bulldogs over time will keep on changing and they will end up with longer faces, they will end up with no wrinkles, they will end up with tails that can wag, straighter legs. So over time, this breed can get healthier. But keep going back to the basic message. Stop and think before buying a flat-faced dog. Yeah, so it's a long process. Dan, uh, Anna, Sonia, and of course, Martha. Thank and you very the much. the breed clubs. You know, yeah, there's bulldog yeah. breed clubs throughout the UK that will give information. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you.